Welcome again, adventurers. As promised, we're going to talk about some math and mechanics today. This conversation has to do with the way that the math of Pathfinder, I think, kind of breaks down and isn't quite as reliable at later levels. And this is sort of surprising in a game that is well known for being a lot of really tight math. The numbers really are balanced. However, what I have noticed in my own gameplay and in podcasts that I've listened to is that seemingly at later levels, the combats are a little bit swingier. There are big swings in momentum that I don't feel like are as common in the later levels. You, or in the earlier levels, I meant to say. Um, you have the adventuring party who is really not doing well. They're taking a lot of damage. They're not able to land some hits. And then a few big hits later, they completely turn things around and win the encounter. Yes, this can happen at lower levels because of course you can land a couple crits in a row, but it doesn't feel like the momentum shifts are quite as large. So does the math support that or is that just sort of in my head? Let's take a look at some numbers and find out. All right, adventurers, now begins the math portion of the video. We're going to take a look at how a D8 weapon with a plus four strength scales as you level up and add additional weapon dice, starting with just a single D8. There are eight possible outcomes that each have an equal chance of happening. The damage rolls are listed here, and we can see that the minimum damage that you would roll would be a five, and the maximum would be a 12. The difference between that, very simple, is a seven. The min-max offset is the division of it, meaning that the maximum is 2.4 times more than the minimum. The average of all of this is 8.5. The difference between the average and the maximum is 3.5. And the maximum damage roll is 1.4 times more than the average. And then, as I said, there's an equal chance of each outcome happening. Let's take a look at how these numbers compare to 2d8 and eventually 3d8. All right, here we have 2d8. You have one dice on one axis, another dice on the other axis, and here are all of the possible outcomes. You can see here, there are a lot more possibilities. They are not evenly represented, and the numbers are much less similar to each other in terms of maximums to minimums. First, let's take a look at the equal chance pie chart that we had in a single D8 and see how that compares to two D8s. You can see here that at the extremes, there is not a very high probability that you are going to land one of these extreme hits. Uh, but there's a good probability that you will be perfectly average or just a little bit off of perfectly average. In fact, I would say that over half the pie chart here is what I would consider average in this. Yes, the average is 13, but 11 is close enough that I would count it. And same with 15. So you have a greater chance of rolling average, even though there's a greater extreme in the dice rolls. Let's take a look at the numbers now. The minimum goes up by just one, minimum of six, but the maximum goes up quite a lot to 20. The difference between that is 14, and now our maximum is 3.3 times more than our minimum. Remember that with a single D8, that was 2.4 times more. So it is a big difference there. The average moves up to 13. The difference between the average and the maximum is now 7, and now the maximum is 1.5 times more than average, whereas before it was 1.5 four times more than average. So not a huge difference, but you do see that the range of possibilities does grow as you add a second damage dice. And now we move on to 3d8. Uh, I did not chart out all of this. I just grab a uh, possible outcomes from anydice.com and put them in here. Uh, this is the various types of damage you can roll and the number of times that each one of those would occur when using 3d8. 
again, you can see in the pie chart here that the extreme ranges are almost impossible to hit. It's almost impossible to mouse over them. There we go. 0.2%. That is one in 512 rolls of being your maximum damage or being your minimum damage. It would hurt real bad to roll minimum on this. And again, you can see that the chances of rolling average or almost average are really high. Uh, the technical average here is 17.5, but I would consider anything from like 21 to 14, maybe average in this, maybe more like 20 to 15. So again, it's a little more than half the pie chart is what I would consider to be average. Now let's take a look at the actual numbers here. The minimum again, moves up by only a single point to seven. However, the max has moved up to 28. The difference between those is 21 points of damage and the multiplier. Now our maximum damage is four times more than the minimum. Let's compare that to the others. Remember it's four times more with a single D eight. That was 2.4 times more with two D eight. 3.3 times more and now it is four times more the max is four times of the minimum that is a huge difference the average is 17 the difference between the max and the average is 10.5 which isn't huge and this is interesting our average to max offset our maximum damage is now 1.6 times more than our average damage with 2d8, it was 1.5 times more. And with 1d8, it was 1.4. So not huge differences, but you can see that the range of rolls increases quite dramatically as you level up, but you are also more likely to roll right around in the average area. So I think it kind of balances out. All right, adventures. There we have it. Yes, and no, the math does and doesn't break down at later levels. Sure, you have a greater range of outcomes, but you also have a greater chance of rolling average or right around average, though due to the number of dice rolls it takes to average things out overall at later levels, you might have some encounters where you are rolling really cold and then really hot and it drastically changes the encounter and hopefully not vice versa. And I'd like to hear from you. How would you use those possible greater swings in momentum in your role play as your characters? Maybe not doing well and then having an absolutely enormous hit could be represented as your more experienced character biding their time and then striking when the moment is right. I think that's a good way to look at that to kind of back flavor some role play into the mechanics. Let me know about it in the comments. And until then, remember, it really doesn't matter what level you are. If you're landing crits, things are gonna go in your favor. And if you're being critted, it's not. It's, it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm.